They were synonymous with their groundbreaking loudspeakers and turntables, notably a sensible, no-frills approach to audio engineering that far exceeded the quality of other competitors at a price that couldn't be beaten. But how did Acoustic Research become one of the greatest audio companies in America, if not the world? It was 1954 when Edgar Vilcher invented and patented his revolutionary acoustic loudspeaker suspension. It would change the way the world made speakers. But how did Edgar arrive here? Let's rewind to 1941, when he was drafted into the Army Air Corps during World War II. He would serve four years repairing radios and electronic equipment for the P-47 Thunderbolt fighters of the 348 Fighter Group. Putting his new skills to work after the war, Edgar opened his own shop in New York's Greenwich Village, repairing radios and building custom sound systems. It was during this time he began further studies in math and engineering at NYU, where he went on to create and teach his own course in the reproduction of sound. Between all of his writings, research, and teachings, Edgar was acutely aware the loudspeaker was the weakest link in the chain of audio reproduction. At the time, most woofers used stiff, nonlinear mechanical springs for suspension to return the cone to its original position. The result? Bass notes with significant distortion. Vilcher surmised that an air cushion would be the most neutral spring, creating the necessary amount of air pressure to return the spring to its original position, allowing the cone enough extension to recreate low frequencies with less distortion. Edgar created a prototype by cutting away the mechanical spring of a Western Electric woofer. His wife, Rosemary Vilcher, then stitched together new surrounds made from old mattress ticking, which was flexible and strong. Edgar shared his design with one of his students, Henry Kloss, who was so impressed with the results that he immediately wanted to partner up with Edgar to manufacture speakers together. Edgar declined, for now. Despite little interest in becoming a businessman, Edgar soon realized that he may have hit pay dirt. The problem was, he didn't have the money to pay a patent lawyer. So he went to work, spending months studying the intricacies of writing and filing a patent. On December 25, 1954, he was awarded patent number 2775309. When Edgar tried to sell his new design to some of America's biggest hi-fi companies, they flat out turned him down. You know the drill. If it were possible, they'd have already invented it. Henry Kloss persisted and eventually won Edgar over, convincing him to team up. Kloss already had a business making wooden cabinets for loudspeakers from his loft in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It would become home to their new company. With Henry's warehouse, Edgar's design, and a few thousand dollars from investors, Acoustic Research Incorporated was born. Their first speaker, the AR-1, was an instant success, setting a new benchmark for extended accurate bass and stereophonic reproduction. Although Vilcher remarked that the reduced cabinet size was secondary to the improvement of sound, it still became very attractive to consumers and more accepted in living room spaces over the refrigerator-sized speakers of yesteryear. <clears throat> Acoustic Research would go on to release the AR-2 in 1957, a smaller, no-frills speaker that was regarded as one of the best-sounding speakers at any cost or size of its time. Besides pioneering new and revolutionary loudspeaker technology, there was another undeniable factor in the success of AR. From the very beginning, Edgar wanted the company to be an equal opportunity employer and implemented non-discrimination hiring. Acoustic research hired on merit rather than race, religion, sex, or age. As well as paying above the standard wage, Edgar also incentivized his workers with a generous profit sharing program that was paid out twice a year. Workers took pride in quality control through rigorous product testing measures. One employee in particular rose to prominence at AR, Roy Allison, whose talents were recognized very early on, who became the company's chief engineer and plant manager, 
and a major hand in designing many of AR's most famous products. AR was unique in their approach to advertising. Edgar avoided sensationalism and would write his own copy, much of it focusing on technical information and reviews from unbiased critics or musicians. AR was also not without its controversies. After three years and irreconcilable differences, Edgar bought out Henry Kloss, who would later own his own company, KLH, licensing the acoustic suspension patent from Edgar. For the next two decades, all of the major companies had switched to the acoustic suspension system prescribed under Edgar's license, paying royalties to acoustic research. Eventually, Edgar would lose the patent when the electro voice company countersued, citing prior art form. Edgar moved on and again redefined loudspeaker design by creating the first commercially available direct radiator dome tweeter. The defining technology in the AR3 released in 1958. Unlike the horn tweeter, which has a very directional beam of sound, the dome tweeter has a wide dispersion of sound and greatly improved high frequency response. For nearly a decade, the AR3 was widely considered to be the most accurate loudspeaker at any price point and could be seen in many professional recording studios or concert halls. In addition to the award-winning loudspeakers, Edgar also designed one of the most iconic turntables of the golden hi-fi era. In 1961, the ARXA was released at a very sensible price of $58, about $500 in today's prices. It was an instant no-frills classic, visually simple in its appearance, employing a unique suspended sub-chassis design. The platter and tone arm were coupled together on a T-bar that was suspended by springs, isolating them from the plinth and any unwanted knocks or vibrations. In other words, a mechanical low-pass filter. It was later succeeded by the ARXB, which added a tone arm cueing lift. By 1966, acoustic research had over 32% of the loudspeaker market share, the largest ever of its kind since records were kept. Edgar was undoubtedly proud of the company he created, especially considering all he had ever wanted was a quiet life in the countryside. But in 1967, Vilcher sold AR to Teledyne, signing an agreement not to go into the business of hi-fi equipment again. He would, however, go on to make life-changing discoveries in the field of hearing aids. After the buyout, Teledyne Acoustic Research continued to produce top quality audio equipment, releasing the AR turntable, the AR EB101 and the AR ES1. Their extended line of AR speakers were also highly regarded, never straying too far from the principles that Edgar Vilcher had pioneered. Sadly, by 1969, the company no longer had the market share it once did and was sold to Jensen Electronics, before being sold again to Recoton Audio Corporation in 1996 and Vox International in 2003 who aren't exactly into the business of making high-fidelity equipment these days. Nonetheless, Edgar Vilcher and Acoustic Research have left an indelible legacy on the field of sound reproduction equipment. Some would say the hi-fi industry will forever be indebted to them. Today, the original products from Acoustic Research can still be collected on the second-hand market and command high prices. Waiting in the Wings is a thriving restoration and modification community on hand to bring these historical pieces back to life, ready for another generation to enjoy. <laughs>